Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to jump into DaVinci Resolve 17, I think point one now, the beta, whichever one it is, the latest version, and go through all the new transitions that they have included in this free editing software. So I'm going to show you what they all do and how you can maybe tweak a couple of them to sort of get a really cool effect out of these inbuilt transitions. All right guys, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve 17 and I want to take you through and show you some of the transitions and I guess some of the newer transitions that they've added to DaVinci Resolve 17. So here we are in the edit timeline and we've got two clips here and we're gonna just use them to demonstrate the transitions. So we're gonna to go to our effects library to our video transitions. Now, the first couple are more or less what we've already had and what I really like now is that you get a live preview even if you don't have footage in the timeline. So if I was to delete that, you'll get a live preview in the viewer of your transition. So that's a really nice feature that they've installed. And you also, on some of them anyway, get a little diagram there showing you what that transition will be. Now I have noticed that the fusion transitions don't really show what that's gonna be. I'm not sure if that's just a bug and it's gonna get fixed, but yeah, something to keep in mind. Also apologies if you hear meowing, my cat is trying to get into my room right now. So yeah, there's that. So these first few here are pretty standard ones that we've already had in DaVinci Resolve. So not really gonna cover them, okay? They're just your sort of stock standard transitions that come in the program. The next ones from Iris down to pretty much down to our Fusion ones, pretty much shaped base transitions, even though they say slide and push, they're more or less just using shapes to split your footage up. And they all have the same editing sort of features in the inspector. So if we just grab the cross iris and we drag it down, we play that through, we have our transition. What's cool now is if you select either clip and go to your inspector, you'll have a transition icon that you can go to. And this is where we can control the parameters of the transition. Now I have found a little bit of a bug with all of this. Like if I click this clip, then it only gives us a little bit of control. Same with this one. It's gonna give us some control here. And then if I click the transition, we get control as well. So it's weird that it's not uniform in the sense that we don't get all the control here, but we get it all here. And then if I click on the transition, we do only, we get it all there as well. So I'm not sure if again, if that's a bug, this is beta software. But anyway, we have this cross iris transition here. And if we go through to the center of that transition, we can uh, add a bit of a border. We can color that border up a little bit and we can do a lot of different things. We can make it ease in and out so that it is more a natural transition, like so. So there's a lot of different things you can do here. You can change the direction, make it go the opposite way, like so. And like I said, all this is easily transferable. So if I was to grab the oval iris and click on this transition, we have all the exact same sort of features. We can add a sort of a sh there. We can change where it sort of starts from we can do the ease in and out. All this is pretty much the same, depending on no matter which one we click on. So I don't really wanna cover them too much, but they're there and there's a lot of cool editing features in built. The ones that I really wanna look at are the fusion ones further down here. And these ones are just absolutely insane. Like there's a lot of tutorials out there. I've even done one, some myself showing you how to do, I guess Sam Calder transitions or like travel film transitions, they're all pretty much built in now in DaVinci Resolve 17. So we have this really cool brightness flash one, which is kind of like an explosion almost, which is really, really, really cool. It's almost like a Luma fade transition of sorts, which is pretty cool. And we can drag that one down here and we can play around with it. Again, if we select that transition, we still have that same weird bug where we click on things and you get different sort of like you see here, shadow and softness. And if I click on the transition, we get brightness saturation. Again, kind of weird. But if we punch through, we have our brightness controls so we can control that and we have our saturation control. So pretty cool that you have all that there. So that's the brightness flash, kind of like a cool little explosion, kind of like a luma fade. Next one is camera shake. Now this one is almost, it's a camera shake, but I almost think of it almost like a glitch transition. So you got that one there, glitches around and we can obviously make it smaller or longer. Now I have noticed that these fusion transitions are capped at 10 seconds. You can't make them bigger than that, but you can shrink them down and make it a bit faster. So you get a cool little glitch transition. 
And we do have, if we go through to the center here, we can change the shake speed, we can make it quite slow. We can increase the shake strength so it's quite intense, add a little bit of a motion blur to it, all that sort of stuff. Pretty cool, increase the contrast, brightness, whatever we wanna do. Pretty cool that we get that there. Again, camera shake kind of acts more like a glitch. Now circles is weird, it's kind of like a ripple effect almost. So if we chuck that down here, it definitely acts like a ripple, kind of strange. It's very similar to the ones further up here, like the spiral wipe and the circle and all that sort of stuff. I'm not sure what you could use it for, but definitely, you know, we can go down here, make it a bit more like a ripple. Go here, make it like a bluey color. And then kind of like a weird kind of thing there. So there's that one. On to the next crash zoom, a quiet, Crash zoom, so the next one is crash zoom. Drag that one down, let's have a look at that one. This one's actually kind of boring. Um, I don't actually think this is a very good transition, but we can add a little bit of motion blur to that one if we want to. Yeah, bit strange, so there's that one there. Now we have another cross dissolve. Um, the, I will explain why this is kind of good in a little bit, a bit later in this video. It is going to be different to the cross dissolve up here in the sense that this is a fusion transition. So we'll be able to edit this in fusion. Next one is drop warp. This is a really cool one, quite used a lot quite frequently in travel videos. So we're gonna got this like bulge, kind of like a spherical distortion going on here. And again, if we click on this, we can increase the scale there to get some really funky stuff going on. Really cool effect there. We got fall and bounce. This one, not so much, but like if we play this back, the top video then comes down and drops down and bounces a little bit and we can change the angle that it's on. So if we want it to come kind of like on a weird sort of angle, we got that one there. Film strip's a pretty cool one. It's like an old school film strip transition. So we play this, this one might take a little bit time to buffer through. So it kind of shrinks in and rotates out. So yeah. That one's cool. And we obviously do have some motion blur control here. We can even change the film color if we want to, make it a bit red. So we got that there, which is cool. Moving on to flip 3D. This is like old, like old school tacky transition. I would never use anything like this, but hey, there are people out there that want this sort of stuff. Just a little flipperoo right there. Nothing too, nothing too spectacular. Can add a little bit of motion blur, but not a whole lot more. It's just a quick flip. Foreground wipe, pretty pretty standard sort of idea, just sort of wipes across, and this one doesn't have as many controls. We can do a bit of softness, but that's about it. Moving on to the next one, getting to the more interesting one now. Here's the glitch one. It'll be interesting, let me know in the comments what you think about this glitch transition. It's weird, it's kind of just like a, kind of like a weird visual distortion effect going on. I do feel like the camera shake makes more sense as a glitch. As you can see, we get that RGB split there. Next one is noise dissolve, which is a pretty cool one. Kind of, I don't know what that sort of looks like, almost like a burning on effect, sort of like a softer burning on effect. And this one is gonna be a really valuable one to look at and we can type change sort of how it's working. We can increase the mix a little bit, change the softness. We can make it a real hard edge if we wanted to do that can change the animation of it, which is pretty cool. And we can even like animate this over time. So we could like, let's go equals random. And then that's gonna be a random thing. So as we go through this transition, it kind of like an sort of animates here, which is kind of cool. So that's a really cool one. On to the next, we've got paint on. Now this one I thought was cool, but it's not as good as I thought at the start because you just don't have a lot of options to edit it, at least not in the inspector. But you kind of get this little paint on effect and if you put the motion blur on and increase the shutter angle, you can get a bit more of a paint effect where you get a few more strokes. So that looks, it's okay. I'm sure you can think of a use for that one. Now we've got our pans. I don't want to show you all of them, but they're pretty self-explanatory. I like how we've got mirroring going on here. So we could probably use this in a travel film, make it a little bit shorter, play that through. Nice quick little whip pan transition. Really cool one built in. Add a little bit of motion blur to that. Boom, super cool. And again, we've got up, down, left, and right all on them ones. 
We also then have some rotate ones, which are pretty cool, similar sort of thing, but they just rotate. Pretty cool transition there. And then we have our round and down. This one is like a real trippy one just because there's a lot of movement going on, but it basically sort of like rotates it and then flips it and then puts it all back together. So you've got that one there. Again, you can see that not all of them have really good options. And you can see when we play that back now with the motion blur, that is just, there's a lot going on. Now we have our slides. Our slides are very similar to our pans. So we have our slide right. And you can see it's very, very similar. What's cool with this one, we can make sure it is already set to easing in and out. We can add a little bit of motion blur there. And then we get this really, really smooth panning slide transition whatever you want to call it now we're down to the bottom one these ones are my favorite these ones are like the ones that i can tell they put the most effort into first one we're going to look at is the tunnel of light transition and it's exactly that when you ever see those tv shows or the movies where they say don't look at the light that is this transition like look at that that is some gnarly stuff we chuck that down play it through like it doesn't work too well in this sort of a scenario but you get this kind of like distortion in the center where everything gets pulled in, goes real bright and then gets spat back out. And if we click on the center here, we can play around with the contrast, we make it less contrasty so you don't get as much black, which is cool. And you can increase the gain of the glow, put the glow size up, we can change the color of it. And yeah, that's a really trippy one, kind of cool. Next one is our warp effect, which is sort of like a zoom in and then like a little bit of an animation. So we got like with a weird sort of like zoom in there. And we don't have many options for there. We add a quick motion blur, it's not gonna do a whole lot. So we've got our warp. And now we have our ever so popular zoom in transition. So we chuck that down on there and we get our nice little travel zoom in like so. And then we have our zoom in and out. Now the zoom in and out one, I don't really like too much. It's just a little bit too bouncy, I guess, if you wanna call it that. You can change how much it zooms in and out if you want to, add a little bit of motion blur like I do to everything. But it, as you can see, that little weird little bounce out at the end there, it's just a little bit too animated for my liking. I do prefer the zoom in one and you can uh, speed that one up if you want to. And then it's already set to ease in and out, which is really, really cool. And you can make it zoom in a fair bit more if you want to. So really cool. That one's a really handy one to have. Now we do have a few resolve effects transitions. I cannot remember distinctly if these are for the full studio version only, but we got some cool little burn away ones here, which is really, really cool. As you can see here, we move through. And then we have the DCTL TL transition, which um, I didn't get working. So there's that one there. So those are the new transitions inbuilt into DaVinci Resolve 17, but I wanted to show you one little cool thing with all these fusion transitions that they built in. And so what's really cool is that, sorry, so DaVinci Resolve 17 just crashed. That's what happens when you run beta software. So what we wanna do is we wanna right click on our transition here. And we're gonna go open in Fusion page. What that's going to do is open the hierarchy of how this transition is working. And honestly, we can double click onto that transition and see how they're actually using it. But all you need to know is that you can actually add things to this transition if you want to. So we could add a node here. Let's do an invert color, I'm gonna add that one. So that's kind of trippy. And what's cool is it doesn't apply it to the footage, but it applies it to the transition. So now our zoom in has this inverted color thing going on, which is super, super awesome. What I was saying with this one is like, you can go through and grab anything if you want, chuck the cross dissolve there, right click, open in Fusion, and it's going to show you how this cross dissolve works. So you can add Obviously it's just a dissolve there and you can add whatever effects you want to after the fact. So we could go into effects library and we could go open effects. Let's say, let's say we wanna chuck a blur on there, we'll drop a box blur. And now if we go back, we have our cross dissolve box blur built in. And I think that having that is going to be super, super powerful with it built in to DaVinci Resolve. It all of a sudden makes all these fusion transitions that they built, which are awesome, and takes them to the next level. So I'd really love you guys to go in and grab these transitions, not only take them into fusion and add your own little sort of pizzazz to them, but also like click in these and have a look at how they've actually created these different 
I guess, these different transitions, which is super cool. So you can see how they've actually used it. So there you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that little, I guess, demo explanation video. Hit the thumbs up button if you did and subscribe to the channel to see more DaVinci Resolve content and tech videos in general. But until the next video, guys, see ya.